Hello guys, today we will have a junior code review based on a tweet by Satish here I received recently. We will touch on three main topics, which is installation process, which includes factories and seeds, then caching and how it is used in the wrong way here in the project and the classic n plus one query with eloquent and as usual i want to emphasize that i'm doing code reviews not to scrutinize or criticize but for the person and for others in the audience to learn something new so i will try to kind of go easy here on the author but there are quite a few fundamental things that are let's put it this way not ideal and by the way it's good to be back on this channel after a week of vacation and week of silence on this channel as i mentioned in the last video before the vacation i want to change things a bit on this channel and you should expect more deeper and longer videos and less quick tips which also means that the videos are not necessarily daily because it takes more time for me to prepare like for this code review it took quite a lot of time to read the code try it out then make a list what to talk about and then make a proper explanation for each of things with all that intro over let's dive into the code the first impression from any project that I could review is, of course, installation instruction. And I go into the repo and I see this. No, read me. So that was my first kind of unpleasant surprise. So someone is asking me to review the code and the project, but they don't give me the installation instructions. But luckily with my experience, I know how to install a typical Laravel project. So it mostly worked. So copy.env.example, put in credentials, then composer install, php artisan key generate, npm install and npm run build, and then the last step was database migrations with some seeded data I hoped for. So I'm running php artisan migrate fresh seed and I get an error. So yeah, the default installation with seeds doesn't even work. Again, I'm trying to picture my first impression to you. What should be my first impression if the installation doesn't have README and doesn't work? But I've powered through with the hope that it would be a small issue. And in the seeds, I find this. The error was in transaction factory, which has a date. And the error was about that date is unknown column. Let's compare those with transaction actually model, fillable. We see that the name of the field has been changed to date time and in the history of the project i actually found the commit responsible for that change to date time in the migration here one of the changes was here but apparently the author forgot to change that in the factories so we need to do something like this and now if we run migrate fresh seed it works so the overall conclusion from here and the advice it happens so often not only for junior developers that we make changes in the code introduce some new feature new behavior but after that we forget to try to install the project with fresh eyes as a new user as a new developer on the team from time to time do get back and do try yourself or even better automate that by doing some ci cd which installs the project fresh every time and sees if there are no errors and that is not all that i want to say about installation so okay it worked i launched the url which redirected me to login and now i expected to have some credentials there are no readme maybe there's something in the users table nope i don't see any users here maybe i forgot something in the seeds but no there's only customer and transaction no user seeded and i thought okay user factory create is commented out and probably this would create me 10 users with default user factory and i would be able to log in with one of them try that and failed because user factory not found so for some reason the author decided to delete the default user factory provided by laravel not sure why okay so that didn't work either and i thought how to create that user if the home page redirects me to login and there's no register button here anywhere but maybe register does exist let's take a look at the routes so i see routes web and i have auth from default laravel breeze and register is here it's just that there's no link to it so if i try to go to register oh yeah it does exist so fake filler chrome extension register and yay i'm inside so yeah see how much i've been talking already just about installation so the first barrier to even see the code to try it out and imagine how many people how many potential users of your application or your package would drop off without desire to debug any of those issues or imagine if you present that code to an employer or as a job interview part as your example project on github 
that would totally not impress the employer but okay we're in and now let's move to topic number two which is caching and i found out the issues by trying out that application so there's customers list and let's try to add a new customer again fake filler chrome extension submit validation that phone must be 10 characters okay try that submit and i still have five customers so no customer added here if i go back i see wait six customers customer list i see five here so i thought what's going on maybe some kind of multi-tenancy or global scope or something like that the answer is simpler if we go to routes web and the customers class which is live wire component and scroll down to mount to load the customers we have cache remember here for the list of customers which is a good intention to use the cache and the cache is for 600 seconds which is 10 minutes so a bit complex operation so it's good to cache those but the question is when the cache is refreshed in the create customer component which is responsible for the form in the method of add customer there's validation eloquent method dispatch session flash and there's no cache refresh and i would add those two lines these code lines are for me they weren't in the code so i would forget one key about customers list this one and also i found on the home page cache remember customer count which also needs to be cleared from the cache whenever a new customer appears and another weird detail remember the difference six number six of customers in the home page and then five in the list why is it different because the difference of this number for customer count the cache is for 60 seconds and for customers list the cache is for 600 seconds so that inconsistency may lead to even more weirder problems in your application while browsing different pages so yeah if you do use the cache please make sure it's consistent and that is cleared whenever you need it to be cleared with new data available now let's move to topic number three which is n plus one query problem in eloquent if we go to the list of customers still five customers cache hasn't been refreshed and down below we see the bar which is called laravel debug bar which is installed by default in this project which is great but I think the author didn't really look at it. At least that's my assumption. Because if we look at the queries, and let's put this up and zoom in a bit, we have 34 queries, 26 of which were duplicates. So five customers. And as you can see, for each customer, there are transactions, then some amount for customer ID 2. So five queries or so for customer ID 2. Then we go to customer ID 3, another five queries and so on now let's take a look at the code so we get back to the same cache code but let's take a look deeper customer select with raw queries which is okay so i don't see anything wrong here necessarily but now we render the view the blade in this case it's live wire and we have for each of the customers and then we call customer latest transaction what is that we find it in the customer model with latest transaction method has one latest of many which in this case executes another query to the database for each customer but in this case it's not n plus one problem because it's only one query per customer which may be fine it could be actually incorporated maybe in the same query here and in fact we do have some of that like max transaction date time but we don't have the full transaction so i would try to incorporate that in the same query but later we have some more code which includes customer balance and that customer balance comes from where from the attribute of eloquent this is an attribute accessor and in here we load the transactions again and again so this is where that n plus one query comes from an easier solution would be to eager load those here so customer select with transactions like this and then in the eloquent model we can change that to this transactions because we're not calling the function we're calling the result of that function which is used here by the way I have a separate video about those two symbols and what do they mean what is the difference i will link that video in the description below but anyway let's remove those and now for refresh remember 34 queries the result didn't change except for that six appeared after 10 minutes of caching but now we have 15 queries instead of 34 so for every customer there's 
latest transaction. Okay, and then there's one more query to get all transactions by customer ID. However, this is still not the ideal solution and I would need more time to remove that attribute at all. Personally, I would not calculate that in Accessor because if Accessor is depending on relationship, then you cannot be sure if that relationship is loaded on some page currently or in the future by other developer and that is a huge risk for potentially n plus one query still happening in the future so i would try to either calculate the balance on each customer in the database after each transaction or again incorporate that somehow in this one query finally small bits and pieces i found in this project code to be improved the first one is dynamic classes like this. So instead of having inline PHP code here, I would use something like in the docs, we have conditional class and styles in the blade. So there's add class directive with conditions that you can put here for different CSS classes. And similar examples are in other parts of the code like class like this or added class here additionally to this it's not necessarily bad it works maybe it's even a personal preference but blade has that ability and not only that if we go down below there's if condition for selected option so also in blade there are more directives for checked disabled or selected or required with the condition that you may put instead of if statement just a bit cleaner and more native to blade then a few more inconsistencies in the code so for example in the update transaction they use blade components from laravel breeze and then if we go to create customer blade for example we don't have that x inputs here why i'm not sure but i don't really personally like that inconsistency in the code you either should follow the same pattern or maybe not use those components at all or another inconsistency for example for live wire create customer component dispatching the event which isn't really even used in any other component maybe that was for the future i don't know because for example in the update customer component we have this dispatch commented out and the event name is the same customer created so something was in progress, but never actually finished. And this is what I feel all over this code. This was kind of my final conclusion or comment or advice. A lot of code commented out like DD, like optionally, I need to kind of power through blocks of code like this customers. That was probably version one, that was version two, and this was kind of live version. But again, I will repeat the same thought that I said earlier. If you ask someone to review your code, whether for just a review or for job interview, please clean up your code and make it more professional because the first impression is everything, especially for juniors. Currently in 2024 market, there's a fierce competition for any junior job and your goal is to impress whoever is the person looking at your code. It should scream like you're a professional already, or at least that you present and format the code properly, clean up after yourself and stuff like that. There's a saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. So again, this is not criticism for that particular author of this code. I saw that multiple times in many junior developer cases. Clean, readable code should be one of your goals, not only working code. So yeah, this is a junior review, which was supposed to be about Livewire, or so I thought, but we went down to fundamentals with Laravel, and I hope it is still helpful. What do you think? Would you have done something differently? What other pieces of advice you have for that author of the code? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time, and see you guys in other videos.